All right, and off to a blazing fast start here. We have the first semifinal of the men's Varsity 8. Now, these are going to be nail-biter races. We have four semifinals here for the men's V8s. In lane one, we have Delaware. Lane two, Purdue. Lane three, UCLA. Lane four, George Washington. Lane five, Washington State. And lane six, Bucknell. Already... All connected, six lanes across. This is going to be an exciting race. So it's hard to tell exactly who our leaders are at this point because we're only about two minutes in. Well, I'm going to jump in and say, you know, I'm going to go with some of the rankings. The polls really had George Washington as your top vote. And right now they are your early leader. So George Washington right down the center of the course. They're sitting with a two seat lead over UCLA. UCLA in second with about four seats over Purdue. Purdue sitting six seats over Bucknell. Back to Bucknell by about a full boat length. It's going to be Delaware. Delaware rowing out of lane one. And then finally, uh, Washington State. So um, again, looking for a really, really strong finish here for all of these crews. It's going to come down. I think it's going to come down to the wire because again, we don't know the fitness levels. We don't know what the strategy is coming into these semifinals. This is the AB semifinal. So the top three finishers will move on to the grand final. The remainder will move on to the petite. But right now, George Washington, they are up front with now seven seats over UCLA. Right, and we are still watching George Washington with that lead over UCLA, but tight racing right now between Purdue and Bucknell. So again, we've got these boats that are way far apart from each other. Purdue in lane two, Bucknell all the way out in lane six. There's a lot of boat action and splashing in between. And as a coxswain, you know, Whitney, you've been there before. You have been in that position where you've got a final or a petite final on the line and you're right on the edge. You're one of the, you're, you're a bubble crew right now. What do you do? What do you tell your rowers? Now that is a great question. And the first thing that you have to look at too are those outside lanes because it is so easy to be on those outside lanes and actually miss another crew that may sneak up on you without knowing it. So you really have to make sure that you have all boats accounted for and sort of take in all of that information and keep your crew calm, collected, and within their own boat. And this is where you know, four minutes in, four tw four twenty five into the race, I'm going to really start pressing so I can move in, start moving into that twelve fifty mark. Um, really keeping it strong through that twelve fifty, setting it up for the last five hundred. And here we are, already crossing that second. Uh, excuse me, that last five hundred. All right, George Washington continuing to hold on to that lead. UCLA watching their second place position being threatened by both Purdue and Bucknell. So those crews pushing each other so hard, they're trying to get into contention for one of those top spots. We've got Bucknell on the outside, closest to the shoreline, really winding it up here, seeing if they can pop themselves into one of the top three positions. But UCLA is so strong. They've had such a great season. But with Purdue right next to them, a perennial powerhouse here in the Acura Championships, so, you know, it's everything on the line right now. They're going to do and throw everything on the table to get into that grand final. George Washington just holding on with so much composure and poise and, you know, just some confidence, I think, coming out of that boat. But it's really the second or third place race. That's what we're looking for. Who is going to get into that second or third place position between UCLA and Purdue? Bucknell on the chase. I think UCLA has got it locked up. With Purdue right there, it's going to be back and forth between them for that second or third place position. I think a little bit too late for Bucknell. And for Delaware, Washington State, still there in contact, but in six. But all the way down to the wire, it is going to be George Washington for the win. UCLA right now holding on to that second place position. Purdue right there for third. And then here comes Bucknell. And now Delaware and Washington State.
And here we go off the start. This is the second semifinal of the men's Varsity 8. And we have a beautiful shot of UCI. Again, those anteaters. And look at that, folks. We have a bucket hat in the boat. Let's see if it gives them the free speed that they need to help get them across the line first. In lane one, we have Bowden. Lane two, Rutgers. Lane three, Michigan Rowing Association. Lane four, UCI, Bucket Hats. Lane five, Notre Dame. And lane six, Virginia Rowing Association. And it looks like we are through the breakage point. All boats still connected. But uh, again, tight. This is going to be tight. Let's get some places for you. It's looking like... A whole lot of separation, Whitney. I mean, right now, it's, again, we're still pretty early on, but... In the lead, maybe just by a, not even a deck anymore, just as I said that, it, it's changed and it's evened up. So lanes three and four, pretty much even with each other. That is Michigan and UC Irvine. So UC, UC Irvine, Michigan, and then with Notre Dame right there as well. So we've got three boats almost dead even straight across. Back behind them in fourth, it will be Virginia. Virginia leading maybe by one seat over fifth place Rutgers. Rutgers with two seats over Bowdoin. But at this point in the race to see three boats pushing themselves out and really almost dead even this is going to be a great race all the way down the race course I mean look at Notre Dame we have them almost challenging for the lead already and now three boats across like we said Michigan Rowing Association UCI and Notre Dame pushing but this is anybody's race even coming up on the outside looks like Bowden Rutgers, not far behind, just four or five seats down. Everybody's still connected here about two minutes in, so we're going to start to see them settle into that body of the race and see who makes that transition, that nice powerful transition for the middle thousand or so to take it home. And UC Irvine and Michigan, um, both in this semifinal, they were the winners of their respective heats. Um, not much difference between the time, maybe just a couple of seconds. Um, and, you know, when you're comparing the times coming out of the heats, again, you really have to look at the rest of the competition. Sometimes a crew will really, really have to push to get that win. Sometimes they're not really being challenged, you know, quite at all. But here at the Acro, we're looking at so many fast crews that you really can't take any chance of complacency and of course, none of these crews will fall into that category at all. But right now, it looks like UC Irvine has that lead. They're sitting with a four-seat advantage over both Michigan and Notre Dame. Michigan, I'm going to give them the advantage for the second place position, maybe one seat over Notre Dame. In fourth, I'm going to move over to lane one. That's Bowden sitting with two seats over Rutgers and Rutgers two seats over Virginia. Now, I have to say, with these three boats kind of trailing, three boats leading, three boats trailing, but it is very close. What do you as an athlete want to hear if you are slightly down at about halfway? So we're 318 into the race now. You're slightly down at the 1,000. As an athlete, what do you want to hear from your coxswain to urge you into one of those leading positions? I think it's all about trust at this point. It's about trust and confidence in your racing plan, confidence in your fitness. I mean, I think that depending on where you are, you know, are you a bubble crew that is looking at possibly a spot in the grand final, or are you trying to just win it? So, of course, at this point, these top three boats, Irvine, Michigan, Notre Dame, they're racing for lanes at this point. So, at this point, these top three boats, they are looking at a grand final position. But because we are just in the third 500, we still have a lot of race course to go. And as we saw in that previous race, you know, there is so much to be said for a really good sprint. And I have watched uh, races where there is a team that went from a last to first at a national championship. And I mean, I, I, I just think that you have to keep your eye on everybody. So no time for complacency. Don't sit back. What I'd want to hear from my, from my coxswain is all about confidence. Right, UCI really doing a nice job here as they continue to push forward. They are now looking at about a stern advantage over Michigan. Michigan looking about four to five seats over Notre Dame. On the outside, it's going to be Bowdoin continuing to hold on to that fourth place position. Behind them, it will be Rutgers and then finally Virginia. So coming into the spectator area, let's hear it for these guys as they contest for that grand final or the petite level final. 
Irvine, Michigan, Notre Dame, so close here between these boats, but it is Irvine right now that is executing their race plan perfectly as they come in to the final 250 meters. Let's see if they can hold on to it all the way to the finish line. Now, one thing that actually gets really exciting here, I have to pipe in as a coxswain, is this is where the race can actually start to get really frantic. So if you do your job well, you can actually keep your crew very, very focused and start to sharpen up as we come into those last 250. So let's see where everybody's at now because this is a nail biter of a race. Absolutely. I'm looking at that outside lane, Bowden. I mean, what a great sprint that they've been able to put on. We've got UC Irvine out in front, Michigan right behind them, but I don't know. I mean, it is heating up here between Notre Dame, Rutgers, and Bowden. Really, really tight as we come into these final strokes. I mean, what a turnaround. It's going to come down to the wire. You guys can hear the cheering in the background for these crews, but right now it is the Ant Eaters of Irvine with a bit of open water at the finish. It is Michigan right here. And indeed, Notre Dame holding on to that third spot. Bowden so close in fourth. Rutgers and now finally Virginia. And it looks like we have a start here. Semi-final number three of the men's varsity eight. And we're looking at uh, the UC Davis Aggies here, again, led by Desmond Stahl, a well-known coach. He's led some programs to uh, great success here. And let's go down the line. In lane one, we have Colorado. Lane two, Boston College. Lane three, Minnesota. Lane four, Vanderbilt. Lane five, those Aggies. And lane six, Virginia Tech. Looks like we are through the breakage point. And as soon as we get that camera angle, we will give you some placing here. Wow. Look at this. This beautiful shot here from the drone. It looks like the Aggies here. Uh, UC Davis pretty close with Vanderbilt and Minnesota. Minnesota may be taking the lead here. Is that kind of what I'm seeing here? Absolutely. I am seeing Minnesota with a slight lead. I mean, I'm going to call it by maybe a deck right now for that lead position just in front of uh, Boston College. So um, let's see. Mm, yep, that would be Minnesota with just a slight lead over. I'm sorry, that would be Vanderbilt on in lane four. So Minnesota in the lead just by a canvas over Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt with a six seat lead over UC Davis. UC Davis maybe one seat over Boston College. So Boston College in fourth, but right next to them will be Virginia Tech and then finally Colorado. So a lot of overlap between these crews. Nobody has open water. Uh, we're seeing everyone settle down and get into their base race. And we're seeing some pretty fast times out here today. There is really just favorable conditions. Sometimes, as we know, as it heats up, the conditions can sometimes get a little bit faster, but really not much challenge coming out of these conditions at all. Just really ideal here at beautiful Melton Lake in Oak Ridge, Tennessee. And Minnesota taking advantage of these conditions and now pushing themselves out to a little bit larger of a lead, maybe now three seats over Vanderbilt. But you know what I have to say, not even by that much, because look at Virginia Tech, who kind of is our, our trailing eight here, not even that far behind the leader. So these boats are actually pretty close coming down the line about 220 into this race. So they're kind of settling in. We may start to see a little bit more separation here. It may be a power versus rate, uh, rate thing. Not really sure yet. It's going to be really exciting to see. Look at this. Bow ball to bow ball coming down the line. Minnesota and Vanderbilt, I believe. Is that what I'm seeing here? That is correct. They are pretty much dead even, I would say. You know, and Minnesota and Vanderbilt, like, they have pushed each other. They're almost like stroke for stroke. If you're looking at this, and there we go. We've got another bucket rig in that Vanderbilt boat on the starboard side. Um, and it's working to their advantage. I'm going to give a very, very slight advantage right now to Vanderbilt, maybe by a bow ball for that lead position. But again, there is no one that is trailing. There's no one that's being left behind. 
line, everyone is still within contact to each other. What's changed a little bit is that third place position. I'm going to move over to uh, Davis. So Davis pushing themselves into third, just barely being able to hold off Boston College. So Boston College looking all the way across the race course at UC Davis, seeing if they can maybe take away a little bit from Davis, sneak themselves into that into that C level final. So we'll watch them as they progress down the race course, and then right there with them, it's Virginia Tech in the in the sixth place position. It will be Colorado, so just slightly off pace, but again, still within contact. Now, I really want to hand it to Vanderbilt here. I have to say, this is a very impressive performance by them. They've had a lot of turnover during COVID and even just before that. They ended up having their alumni buy them a bunch of singles so they could even get out on the water. And they lost so many members of their team. And they've really come back together after half of their, their squad not even knowing how to sweep row. And now, here they are. You know, one of the things that I learned in talking to some of the coaches, too, is that transitioning into those sculling boats has really helped them in the big boats. There's something about learning how to row a single, rowing a double, rowing a pair that allows you to be more responsive and perceptive about how you're moving an eight. So if you can be learn to be sensitive to the power that you have in a single, it translates perfectly over into the big boat, and you can really figure out if you're effective or not. And right now, I mean, they are doing such a great job here in uh, that Vanderbilt boat. They've really pushed themselves out just a bit farther over Minnesota. I'm looking at about a stern advantage now at 1,500 meters. So 500 meters to go. Vanderbilt now with that solid lead. Minnesota right behind them. This looks like Davis now for that third place spot. They are holding off Boston College and Virginia Tech with Colorado coming into that sixth place position. Absolutely. And you know, the value in those small boats and sculling like that, you see very often in Europe and the UK, they really, really value those small boats. And so I think COVID has kind of taught us a lot of that here in the US to actually put our athletes in those small boats. And look what's happening. We are seeing some phenomenal big boat racing because of rowing so many of those small boats. And a lot of even these novice boats and some of the small boats um, just look great. That's right. That's right. These varsity crews, again, as we've talked about, there could be a varied mix of athlete in these in these boats. We could have uh, some varsity members that started rowing their freshman year and didn't get to race for the for the the previous two years, you know, so they could be considered novices. They've got an extension rule with the eligibility, and that's really proven to be um, a, a good choice for a lot of these crews. But for some, they could be true novices in their first year of rowing. Hard to tell, but at this point, we've got Vanderbilt taking full advantage of their fitness as they continue to push themselves a little bit farther away from Minnesota. Coxon, most likely, I'm going to guess, calling for open water at that finish line, and they've got it. So Vanderbilt with about two seats of open water. They are first across that line, followed by Minnesota. And now here comes Davis. Those are your top three crews to move into the third level final. They're followed by Boston College and now Virginia Tech. And then finally, Colorado. And we have a start of the last race of the day. This is the men's varsity eight semifinal number four. 
And let's see, in lane one, we've got Ohio State, lane two, Villanova, lane three, UNC, lane four, Middlebury, lane five, UC Santa Barbara, and lane six, Oregon. And again, looks like we are just past that breakage point. And again, as soon as we get that camera angle, we will give you those places. Oof almost straight across. I mean, look at this. We don't have anybody trailing behind by too much. Maybe Oregon behind just a little bit bow to stern, but it looks like, I mean, almost a five boat race. Yep, that's right. This is still pretty early on, so we'll let it shake out just a little bit. But your early leader is going to be Middlebury. Middlebury rowing out of lane four. They are uh, having a really good start to their race and, again, holding off the rest of the field, but just barely. So a lot of contact. No one has broken away with open water. And, again, still very early on. But right now, Middlebury, Middlebury with your lead, they are followed by lane five, Santa Barbara. Santa Barbara in the second place position just by about a seat over both Villanova and University of North Carolina, those two boats even. Back in the fifth place spot, again, two even boats right here. This is Oregon and Ohio State, those boats on the outside lanes jockeying for either that fifth or sixth place spot. One of the advantages of being able to use the drones for uh, watching these races is you can really see how well the boat is doing in terms of steering. We're seeing uh, getting a little bit close for comfort there in a couple of the lanes. Um, one of the things that the referees do a really good job of is making sure that these, faces, these races are absolutely fair, that there's no interference, but giving some course corrections if needed and making sure that the boats are progressing down the race course in the best and fairest fashion. So again, Middlebury continuing to hold on to the lead, but then now almost three boats straight across. Too hard for me to tell between second, third, and fourth between Villanova, University of North Carolina, and UC Santa Barbara. Back by a bit of open water now, Oregon and Ohio State also very close to each other, pretty much even for that fifth or sixth place spot. And it looks like coming into the thousand, kind of pushing towards it. We've had a little steering correction by Santa Barbara. It looks like she's back in the center of her lane there and got control of it again. But that is something, again, that can make or break the race. And when it's so close like this, you just don't want to be making those mistakes. Now, it could be anything. It could be that a rower got a blade stuck in the water for a half second too long. You never know what causes that. But boy, does it make it hard to watch when you're just biting your nails, looking at these four boats across, connected and no one's really moving. I mean, we've got all of these boats pretty set one to four. What are you seeing here? Well, that's right. They are now past 1,000 meters. They are 1,000 meters closer to dinner, I think, right now, and a rest and maybe a shower. It has been a hot and muggy day here, so waiting all day long until you get to that final race of the day. I mean, that is really, really tough. So we're seeing the fitness and the composure, all of that coming into play right here in these final strokes. Santa Barbara, as Whitney had said, had a little bit of a steering problem, but they've come back into it and are looking at coming up to challenge Middlebury for that lead position. Also, University of North Carolina, I mean, they are right there as well. Villanova, just a little bit off the back, but with Oregon and Ohio State taking up that fifth and sixth place spot. But let's see if we can have Middlebury hold on to that top spot, or will UC Santa Barbara or maybe even UNC take it away? Now, one thing that can be really difficult about this point of the race, uh, when you're coming into the 1250 and you're starting to kind of think about ramping it up a little bit to the sprint, is a lot of times that's a dead zone. You get real, you start getting real tired. You know your rowers are tired. And as a coxswain, you have to be so strategic about what you ask for. And coming through this last 500 here, I'm going to be asking my crews to start to sharpen up. Instead of asking for power, I'm going to ask for a little bit more precision. They're going to sit up a little bit more. They're going 
going to use a little bit more squeeze in the legs and we're going to see what we can kind of power through in the last couple hundred meters. I think you're absolutely right, Whitney. I, would, would you be my coxswain if I could throw together a boat? We could, we could maybe, you know, put that into play. I would love to have had you as a coxswain because that's exactly what I would have wanted to hear. You don't want to focus on how tired you are. You don't want to focus necessarily on more power because you've given so much already. It is about composure. It's about posture and execution, quick catches, just keeping the technique sharp while you're tired. So here we are, final 250 meters. It's Middlebury that's done that great job of holding on to this lead. They really had to fight off a charge by UC Santa Barbara and UNC on either side of them. And they've done a really nice job winding it up, finishing this piece solidly into that sea level final for tomorrow. And here they are, final strokes here, Middlebury in the lead, followed by UC Santa Barbara and University of North Carolina. In fourth, it will be Villanova, and then finally, Ohio State and Oregon. Yeah, what a finale of a race here. Look at this, charging through the line. Um, I'd be honored to be your coxswain. That's great. Thank you for doing this today. This is... This has been a fantastic race here, coming across the line, Middlebury with those nice cow blades. Uh, what a finish there. That's, that's what you want to see is that beep beep so close as they come across the line, pushing each other. And here we go, Villanova, their final strokes. And then now close here between Oregon and Ohio State. Too close for me to call. It will be Oregon for that fifth place position and Ohio State. And that wraps up our racing this afternoon. So we're looking at a series of grand finals and petite level finals tomorrow. Um, it is going to be an exciting day of racing. We thank you so much for joining us here at the Rowing Channel for ACRAs. And have a great afternoon. And thank you again. This is uh, Whitney and Adrian signing off of day one in beautiful Oak Ridge. Thank you very much. We will be here tomorrow morning again, first thing, for some exciting action on the water.